All right, g'day guys, welcome back to- You saying gay guys? <laughs> no. All right, good day guys, welcome back to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. For Just The Tips, round nine edition, we had an uh, interesting round in uh, round eight. I think we all did pretty well in footy tipping. How did yep. you go? Yeah, eight of nine. Eight of nine, I nice. think I'm uh, seventh out of the comp. No, eight of nine, and Geelong were the only ones who cocked me. I did the same thing, I got eight. So, um, slowly, not really catching you at all, actually. I'm staying <laughs> equally far from you, but I am moving up with, uh, I think eight might be my best score for the week. So, we'll take a look at it. You're on 53, which puts you in seventh overall i'm languishing down in 324 with a score of 44 but pleasingly i beat my dad by a tip so he's on 48 and still at 117th four tips is very doable i, yeah. feel, I feel like i can catch him nine I think you could chase me at some point later in the season to be honest i wouldn't put it past you i don't know nine tips is a lot that's like a tip for every round of the season that's like a whole gang bang we will shout out the winner of this round in the true footy competition it goes to young or old sam ralph with the perfect nine so he's tipped along with a margin of uh, 33 off so I'm guessing he tipped along by about, uh, well, they won by like 63-ish. So he tipped him by five goals, which is, yeah, a pretty ballsy tip, so to speak. And uh, no, very good tipping there. He's not the only person to get nine. There are a few, but that was the best margin. And the tipping leader is now Nick Nah. Uh, with a total score of 55 and 246. So just two ahead of you, Druzy, in mm -hmm. seventh. But uh, he's having a fantastic year. Maintaining his top spot in the fantasy comp, Sean Carr with You Gonna Cry, has extended his average to 2,029. I think he scored like 2144 or 2174 this week, which is just ridiculous. So uh, absolutely killing it, Shawnee. Before we get into the tipping for this round, guys, make sure you go check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. Druzy, I did actually have a great Manscaped session last week. So we did. did yeah, we came out of a sort of semi locked down so I had the masked beard growing and then also um, you know body hair was looking El Stanko so grabbed the ceramic bladed lawnmower 3.0 nice. had a quick sesh uh, I had a fair bit of hair so it took a while but um, with the with the amazing blade that is the lawnmower <laughs> 3.0 uh, it was actually a very easy job has this LED light uh, which made me illuminate my nuts could see everything really clearly nice um, 90 minute battery runtime as well so I didn't have to worry about charging it afterwards as well so yeah you could literally sit through a whole game of soccer um, just shaving your nuts if you really want <laughs> To. Use Manscaped, the premium men grooming product, and use code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. Yeah, that's right. So go to manscaped.com, <laughs> TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into the video. <laughs> Also, we'll just quickly shout out the Drew Footy Show on your channel every week. So go subscribe to the Drewzy channel and you can see our opinions on last week. Whereas in this video, of course, we're just talking about round nine. The first game of the round is St. Kilda versus Geelong at Marvel Stadium with the Saints coming off a tough and gritty win against a plucky Gold Coast side. Uh, it was a good win um, in tough conditions and we know there's a bit of a rivalry brewing. Um, but uh, it was good to see the Saints sort of maintain a little bit of form. You know, they have struggled to put two weeks together in a row um, this season. So two wins on the trot, is uh, it's good and it keeps their season alive just. Good to see Ryder and Marshall back in the ruck. Mm -hmm. Coming up against Geelong, who probably emerged as, you know, potentially the flag favourite at the moment. Obviously, Melbourne, conceivably the flag favourite as well, or maybe even just ahead. In terms of the Saints, uh, Ryan Marshall was pivotal for them in that game. That second half they played, really, really impressive. They come back from behind to win. They weren't letting much in their 50. When it was in there, they got it out straight away. They didn't concede many goals in that second half. And they just clawed back all the way to the win. So props to St. Kilda. And Geelong have just come out of nowhere like a prime Randy Orton. RKO'd the shit out of the Richmond Tigers. And it just throws everything out of whack, which I thought I knew about Geelong. I predicted them to lose by like 40 points. There, they made Richmond look more like Rikishi. We saw the Cats fire on all cylinders as well with their big three forwards kicking uh, 15 goals between them, which is enormous. Jeremy Cameron announcing himself as a feline. <laughs> Fuck, I hate that so much. This will be a really tough ask for the Saints. Uh, they haven't actually beaten the Cats since 2016. Who are you thinking? Geelong. Easy. Yeah. I don't, have they played Marvel this season? I don't think they have. So, you know, could throw a bit of a, a spatter in the plan. I wouldn't write St. Kilda off. They've been playing some good footy in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I will tip Geelong just on the basis of last round. Geelong will win by... 23 points. St. Kilda have a bit going for them now. Jack Billings is another player I mentioned. Quietly going large uh, for St. Kilda at the moment. He had like two goals and 25, having a very good season. Nice. Um, but also, you just look at the, the raw power of Geelong. St. Kilda are a good marvel side, but with their momentum, I think Geelong are going to win this by, yeah, 26 points. The second game of the round is Sydney versus Collingwood, currently at the SCG, although there has been a little bit of conjecture. This fixture could move to the MCG because mm. of some cases um, in Sydney. Looking at Sydney first, they had a tough opponent in Melbourne, one of the toughest uh, trips 
trips and footy right now to play mm-hmm. Melbourne anywhere, to be honest. Really encouraging performance, to be honest. I thought even though they got the L um, after you know beating Geelong the week before. So Sydney is sort of staying irrelevant. Uh, coming up against the Collingwood side, who haven't had too many positives over the last couple of months, uh, got the chocolates against North Melbourne. But to be honest, a three-goal win against North Melbourne, who really knows? Good to see Darcy Moore return to the back line. 28 touches, 19 marks, which is staggering. Um, and to go away, kick six as well. So it's what they do, isn't it? Back to doing what they do. The last time these two met at the SCG, uh, the Pies actually got a win, but I think both of these sides are different sides now. Who are you mm. thinking for this clash? I think Sydney win it wherever the venue, to I, be honest. I agree. Um, yeah, Sydney have been competing with the best of them. Collingwood have not. Simple tip for me. I reckon Sydney get it done by 32 points. Melbourne are a much tougher opponent than Collingwood, so at the same venue, you'd have to say they're going to win. I think it'll be closer. I'll say 18. Next up, we've got a Clash of the Titans here between <laughs> Hawthorne versus North Melbourne. Uh, the Tasmania Derby, you could say, or Derby. It'll be Derby because it's in Tasmania. It's at UTAS, which I think is formerly Aurora Stadium down in Launceston. Right. So it's a Hawthorne home game. North Melbourne don't play in Launceston. They play at, uh, you know, Blunt, yeah, Blundstone down in Hobart. Hawthorne coming off a six-goal loss against West Coast at the MCG, one their fans, I think, were a little bit filthy with. Really rated themselves as a chance for that game based on what I saw going into it. Um, and an undermanned Eagles side were just far too classy. Tom Mitchell had 41. Uh, you know, he's just playing along, getting a lot of possessions. Aaron Hall had 37 for the visitors. But other than that, between the two sides, no one's really standing out over mm. the last couple of weeks. North did start well against the Pies, but sort of were overcome when more went back. And uh, yeah, three goals was almost flattering. I feel like Collingwood mm. could have put the, their foot down and won by a bit more. So the last time these two sides met at this ground, Hawthorne won, but that was back in 2017. So different landscape now. Who are you thinking for this clash? Well, Hawthorne just beat Adelaide a couple weeks ago down in Tassie. And Adelaide, North, Hawthorne, they're all at that lower end. Mm. I'd say Adelaide would beat North Melbourne. Oh, they, yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, Hawthorne, I think, get it done. Uh, but, you know, this could be the week that North win it, but I don't think so. I'll say Hawthorne by 20 points. I've been saying North might win a game here, um, and I've been saying it for a while now, and I'm absolutely sick of it. So this will be, <laughs> this will be the week that they do it, yeah. where I don't say it. I'm pretty confident. I think Hawthorne will comfortably be a better side. Uh, disappointed with last week's effort. They'll win this by 25. Next up, we have one of the fieriest clashes in uh, in modern football. Gold Coast wow. versus Brisbane at Metricon. Um, it's interesting. We've had like a, a rivalry game the last four rounds. They've mm. spaced them out this year. The last time they beat Brisbane at Metricon is back in 2016. I think right. they've had a win at the Gabba since. Um, but obviously, they fell short against St. Kilda. Tuke Miller playing pretty good footy. He's averaging 29 guys. Uh, touches a game and mm-hmm. Ben King still doing really good things averaging three goals a game which is fantastic for a young nice. fella uh, and for Brisbane they got the job done against Fremantle four goal win pretty standard um, without Neil but I, one player I do want to highlight is uh, Hugh McCluggy just having a fantastic year I won't say breakout he was fantastic last year he's actually second in the coaches votes now um, yeah, okay. which is really showing you know his ascension to being an absolutely elite player good chance he's an all Australian maybe wingman or something this yeah. year as well yeah Hugh, Hugh McCluggy coming out and being a star doesn't surprise me I think we've seen that coming for a couple of years now mm-hmm. um, so shout out to the Hugh stuff if you didn't know now you know Gold Coast could be capable of an upset I don't want to write this game off like it's an easy win for Brisbane these games have been fiery in the past as well yeah I guess I'm hyping up Gold Coast more than I actually think they're going to win but I don't think we can disregard Gold Coast here. They beat Sydney a couple of weeks ago. We know how, Sydney, how good Sydney are. Having said that, Brisbane just looked like they played in third or fourth gear against Frio and just got the job done so easily. So, yeah, I'll tip Brisbane to win this one. Uh, I'll tip them to win in a more close game. I'll go 16 points. I agree with you and I second that Gold Coast are not easy beats, but I think looking at the momentum that Brisbane have, um, they've kind of re-emerged. Even with Neil out, they've smashed Port. Um, decent win against you boys. They beat Carlton. I'd be shocked if uh, Gold Coast beat them here. So I'm actually going to tip Brisbane by 29 points. Next up, we have the 2019 Grand Final rematch between Richmond and GWS. This time at Marvel, not actually at the MCG, which is mm. interesting. Um, Richmond obviously coming off having their cheeks clapped by Geelong. Yeah. A result not too many people were seen coming, at least in the margin. Uh, looked pretty listless in the second half and, uh, yeah, obviously couldn't cope with Geelong's, you know, star power. Shy Bolton did have a mark of the year contender. Oh, that yeah. was great. Um, he played well, had three goals, 21 touches. Dusty was completely nullified as well, um, which doesn't happen too well. Often, so uh, yeah. he'll be looking to bounce back. On the GWS side of the ledger, they overcame a fast-finishing Essendon um, in a game that shouldn't have been as close as it was. Yeah. They probably just had a bit of a lapse there. Essendon, again, no slouches. I think with the form that GWS has had recently, that result is a little bit closer than they'd like, and I think they've been in pretty good form, particularly with guys like Taranto uh, in their midfield really lifting as well. These two sides uh, have met once since the 2019 grand final um, mm-hmm. and GWS actually won it who are you vibing for this game is there any chance the Giants upset them yeah I reckon mm-hmm. what do you reckon uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah. Uh, this is a hard one to tip because Richmond haven't looked too convincing so far this season and GWS have been in good form for the last month or so 
So it's a hard one to tip when you look at the form. I can see GWS winning this, but the safe tip's always just back Richmond to <laughs> get it done. That Richmond game against Geelong was probably the worst Richmond performance I've seen over their reign, personally, with my own eyes. Richmond, get back into what you can do, play your system, and win games. And win this one by 30 points. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the fact is, is that Marvel does maybe give GWS a bit more of a chance. If it was the G, I would say no chance, to be honest. Uh, mm. I don't think they've ever beaten Richmond at the G. So um, a bit of a window there. But again, like you said, Richmond just towered up St Kilda a few weeks ago there. So I can't see Richmond not turning up again. They clearly weren't up for the contest against Geelong. They'll make a statement in this game and they'll win by 26. Next up, we have potentially clash of the round, Port Adelaide versus Bulldogs, two of the bigger contenders this year, mm -hmm. uh, two potentially top four teams in our eyes anyway. Port Adelaide uh, had a pretty comfortable showdown win, not too much to take out of that game other than Tom Cleary and Aaliyah Aaliyah playing really well uh, down back. Uh, obviously, Tex Walker's pretty much Adelaide's biggest threat by far. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, pulled off a really good comeback victory against Carlton. Good in the sense that they came back and won, not good in the sense that they were five goals down. Yeah. The other side of that is, you know, when teams have been winning for a while, obviously there's going to be a form slump and there was a real threat they were going to drop that game and they didn't and they're now seven and one. So that is hugely encouraging and Josh Bruce kicked five goals as well. The Dogs won twice at Adelaide over against Port in 2016, the year they won the flag, and 2018. But again, Port Adelaide are a different beast this time. There was a good game in Adelaide last time they met last year. Who do you think is going to win this game? This is a tricky one. This is the game of the round. I think Port at home has the biggest home ground advantage in the comp, to be honest. The Bulldogs lost to Richmond. Port Adelaide have beaten Richmond. This is the logic I go off most of the time. <laughs> the Bulldogs didn't have their best showing last week either, so it's two performances in a row where the Bulldogs have sort of started to slow down from that early season form. I'll tip Port to win this one, uh, but yeah absolute slobber knocker cracker jacker of a game here so yeah I'll go Port to win this by 11 points I agree with you I'm going to go with the home side here uh, Bulldogs on their day obviously capable of winning this game but uh, Port Adelaide just a little bit more convincing uh, over the last couple of weeks the dogs have kind of uh I don't want to say form slump because they won last week, but um, obviously just dropped off the ball slightly and it's not going to be enough to win this game. So Port Adelaide will win this by four goals. Next up, we have another mouthwatering contest. You've got Essendon hosting Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. Essendon, uh, as we alluded to before, failed to get the chocolates against GWS uh, despite a very fast finish. But, you know, encouraging form for a young developing side to lose by two points is quite an honourable loss, although it may have come at the expense of Jake String. I'm not too sure, but he's listed as a hamstring injury from that game, uh, which is a bit of a blow. So hopefully he's all right. Parrish had another 35 for the Dons as well continuing his breakout season on the Fremantle side of the ledger uh, I'll just ask you what did you think of the Brisbane Fremantle game and Fremantle's performance stagnant it's the best way I can describe it there was nothing that showed up nothing that like surprised me like it was literally just yep they're a better team and they beat us and yeah there was nothing I can't really tell you anything about that game to be honest like <laughs> good there analysis was, <laughs> there was nothing really to take out five kicked a goal finally Caleb Strong kicked a couple but there was nothing there to tell me that we improved this week. I'd say somewhat of an honourable loss. Brisbane at the Gabba is another really tough trip. The thing that works against Fremantle in this game, uh, other than Fredericks now being out, so, you know, the injury list builds up. You actually haven't beaten Essendon at Marvel since 2010, uh, zero from four attempts as well. So the form line is with Essendon. We talked about Essendon having dropped games by one point, two point, and three points. So maybe their ladder position um, is a little bit deflated compared to how good they've been. Do you think Fremantle have a chance of an upset here? Yeah, I think these things are pretty evenly matched. Go either way. Uh, it is at Marvel and we play Marvel terribly. But we're fucking due a win at Marvel. We're due an away win. Can't back against us against Essendon because it would kill me if Essendon won this, to be honest. Because, like, we need to be further in our development than we are. So I'm going to back the system. I'm going to back the boys this week. This is a bit of a roughie to tip, um, but I will tip the Dockers. Mm, I like it. I do want to tip... Fremantle as well. The other thing that works against them as well, because of the fixture change, the travelling from Brisbane to Perth to Melbourne all in the same week. Now, other teams do travel back-to-back uh, -back weeks, but Fremantle are not used to it, so maybe you know, the conditioning might be a little bit off this week. Who knows? If this game was in Perth, I'd be very confident to be free yeah. now, to be honest. Um, but the fact that it's at Marvel where they don't play well, ah, it's tough. I eh? think I might actually tip Essendon. Hey, oh, I, I just think right. with their momentum, I, I actually came into this video fully expecting to tip Fremantle and yeah. I've talked myself out of it. <laughs> nice. Um, and we've also tipped the same every game so far. So I'll go different this round. I'll say Essendon. Back! I saved it. An ultimate game of the round on the Sunday is Melbourne versus Carlton at the MCG. We saw Melbourne overcome a good Sydney side, uh, really took it up to them at the G, didn't allow them to play the games fully on their terms, but still some encouraging signs from that game for Melbourne, uh, in particular their keys. Ben Brown slotted into the side, and they're still winning games. Tom uh, McDonald had a huge game here as well, out of nowhere. Didn't expect him to kick four and be the biggest star on the, on the G that night, and he was. So that's another threat going forward that Melbourne probably 
Uh, have unlocked. He was been locked in a dungeon and they found him. On the Carlton side of the ledger, uh, really took it up for the dogs and will be bitterly disappointed that they let a four or five goal uh, lead slip, um, which is, you know, a common trend for them over the last few years of their rebuild. On the plus side for them, Betts kicked five. Harry Mackay now leads the common with four goals and he's emerged as a superstar of the comp, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I have to say he's the best key forward in the game on current form, yeah. um, which is wild. So they'll be really, really happy with his development. Dees have actually won the last five clashes between these two sides, which is quite interesting considering mm. the Dees have been up and down. On the blues side of it they've lost three of their last five but they actually lost against the dogs lions and port so don't know how much to read into that yeah. who are you vibing for this game probably melbourne melbourne is so defensively sound like you can have all these scoring threats but buddy was didn't kick a goal limiting the scoring shots that Carlton will have will probably demoralize them they're a young side and when they're not hitting the scoreboard that's when it really gets tough although they play with a good intensity for most quarters carlton melbourne are just too good i'll tip melbourne to win this one by 32. Stephen May, I think as well, I think he could be an All-Australian key defender this year. So they're strong all over the park. The only vulnerability for Melbourne in this game is that they can't sustain the effort for a ninth game in a row. Mm -hmm. That's the only way I see Carlton winning this. And to be honest, the mental side of Carlton getting so close to the dogs and losing, I think that actually might deflate them as well. So I'm not going to even consider tipping Carlton here. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's risk of an upset, but I'm going to say Melbourne by 43. The final game of the round is the West Coast Eagles hosting Adelaide at Optus Stadium. I will be in attendance, although I believe I have to wear a mask, which sucks. Um, so I probably won't bother vlogging. But um, either way, Eagles coming off a encouraging. I was actually really, really pleased with our performance against Hawthorne. Seven of our best 12 out. Um, midfield depleted. Backline completely de depleted as well with no Gov, Barras or Hearn. Um, and the young guys came in and stood up. I think we lost Kennedy to a late calf, but there's a chance he's going to play. Uh, and Barras should hopefully come in this week um, against, you know, Tex Walker because we really need yeah. an experienced key defender on Tex. On the Crow side of the ledger, they've dropped four on the bounce after such a good start to the year. A um, couple of close honourable losses in that and then two really poor losses in a row against GWS at home and then the showdown they didn't really let out a whimper either so mm -hmm. really hard to back Adelaide here do you think there's a chance they can beat the no. Eagles? No. Okay cool that's the answer I was going for. West Coast win by 47 points. From the outside as a Dockers fan the player who I think hasn't been giving been given enough credit for West Coast is Jermaine Jones what have you made of him and yeah just the youth in general how's that fitting into this injury depleted side uh, really pleased with the players that have stood up in the absence of the older guys Jermaine Jones is a good nomination he's been a little bit up and down mm. um, but he is also a young guy in his first like I think he's probably played in the teens the amount of games he's played yeah. so um, yeah he's going to be inconsistent but could make way for you know some of the other guys coming in when Ryan and Rioli are back later in mm -hmm. the year uh, one player I really like is Bailey Williams um, okay. the ruck prospect as well so uh, I think the Eagles actually do have more talent than people realise yeah I don't give much respect to Adelaide in this contest I think it, it will be written off I did say West Coast by 47 mm. I'll stick to that yeah, I, uh, I think if we play with a similar intent than we have in the last two weeks, the Eagles have actually won eight consecutive quarters, and that's something we you know, not many teams do at yeah, all. So, wow, um, that's huge. I'll tip us by 37. Nice. That's almost 47 with a three in front of it instead of the four. Yeah. The four is silent. All right, guys, that is all our tips for the round nine of the AFL season. Let us know in the comments what you think of our tips. Who's going to win this week? So we just tipped one differently, mm -hmm. um, Essendon versus Fremantle. So let us know in the comments what you think of that matchup and who's going to win. As always, go check out the Drew Footy Show, which we should have uploaded by now. It's on Drewsy's channel. We talk about the previous round. Um, and if you you know subscribe to that and also follow Drew Footy underscore on Instagram, you can take part in the questions and get involved with the show as well. Shave your balls with Manscaped. Do that too. Thanks, guys. See you in the next video.